I got taken away, my God. Hello, everybody. So uh, we, are, we have Mr. Smith here from the American Red Cross. I'm not going to steal his thunder. We have a very, very exciting announcement to make. We are, uh, I will tell you uh, this, we have three divisions at Operation Hope. We've got Hope Inside for Kids. We've got, that's our work in our public schools. We, because of our work uh, with financial literacy, uh, a former president made financial literacy the federal policy of the U.S. government, which was President George W. Bush. Then we have uh, our work, uh, Hope Inside, our work for the, in communities, and President Barack Obama and uh, uh, President Bush both weighed in on that work. We have now policies in the federal government, both at the local level so, uh, and the federal level with youth and with adults, and we're the only nonprofit allowed to operate side of a bank branch. But after 9-11 uh, 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 and after Katrina, we weighed in with Hope Inside after uh, disasters, Hope Inside for recovery. And we created a Hope Coalition America, which is now uh, the partner with the federal government with FEMA and Homeland Security for emergency financial disaster preparedness response and recovery. The only organization, basically is the Economic Red Cross. Uh, and the only and we, we're honored to model what you guys have done historically. Uh, and, and so we're weighing in, but we, because we're the new kid on the block, we, we needed sponsorship, we needed resources, we needed support to go and do our work. And I don't want to get ahead of this, but I'm, 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 I'm excited. We're going into Houston, people. We're going into Houston for long-term recovery. We're going into Houston, and we're going into Houston thanks to the, can I say it? American Red Cross. American Red Cross, another nonprofit. Hold on, another nonprofit working with another nonprofit. The American Red Cross is giving us a million dollars to go into Houston. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. I will. Uh, I'll, I'll be brief, and I'll just. Uh, you know, John said to me. It's a million dollars. Talk as long as you want. <laughs> All right. John, John said, um, and folks have said, you know, what you guys are doing at the Red Cross, um, we, we thank you. We thank you for it. And actually, I want to thank Operation Hope because, you know, my, my relationship with Operation Hope started 2016 following the floods in, in uh, Louisiana. And at that point, now with this investment seems small, but with, at that point, we invested $350,000 into the financial literacy, financial recovery uh, for our disaster survivors. And that's because we at the Red Cross understand, we understand our lane. We know what we do well, you know, when it's basic needs, um, food, shelter, water, mental health, health, taking care of basic needs. But we also understand that doesn't make a person whole, that there's financial recovery, there's an economic impact of a disaster. And we looked and searched for a partner that could help us do that. And Operation Hope is, is the partner that we've selected. And as a result of that initial $350,000, um, the return on investment, I asked Dr. Ward about this, was $4.8 million in additional FEMA awards and grants. Wow. All right. OK, wait a minute. You guys aren't hearing me. The, our, our clients, our disaster survivors, on average, make less than $30,000 a year, right. right? On average, well, let me just give you the stats. I'm a stat guy, I don't want to bore you, but I'll just give, give you the stats. Female-headed households, 87%, okay? We talk about recovery from a disaster, and we talk about helping folks get back on their feet. If you don't talk about the economics of that, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. So it just so happened, and I'll, I'll give you this story, and then I'll, I'll, I'll be out your way. I was late getting here because I was stopped in Baton Rouge um, on Monday and met with, because I got to do my due diligence, right? I'm investing these, mon this, this, these funds. Want to make sure we're getting a good return on our investment. I met with a young lady who said to me, Mr. Smith, I had given up hope. I thought bad things happen to good people and that's just the nature of the business. My mother and I had bought a home four years ago. Two years ago, the storm hits. We were not prepared both on a personal level or a financial level. Long story short, they fall behind on their mortgage payments because 
understand this. You may be displaced from your home. That mortgage is still due. That mortgage is still due. So they had fallen behind, and she was, she was like, I had given up hope. But one of Operation Hope's financial counselors, we were, we were working back and forth um, with not one of their financial sponsors or, or banks, um, but another institution who will try and connect. And they had refused, refused to do the loan modification. We're ready to take the property. Operation Hope steps in, says, wait a minute, no, you're not. Not only are you not going to take the property, but we're going to find a way to do this loan modification. <laughs> Work through this process where she was in a, um, not a great loan, I'll just use that term, not a great loan prior to, but got her into a much more stable, you know, one of those adjustable loans with all kinds of stuff, uh, put her into a, a flat rate that she and her mother can afford forever. They will not lose their home. So John talks about, and you guys, you know, the word hope is out there. That's Operation Hope, literally hope in action. The young lady said to me, I had given up hope. Y'all, we don't want anybody to give up hope. And if, if the Red Cross can partner with Hope and, and others to make sure folks don't give up, it's worth the investment for us, you know? And, and as John said, you know, dollars don't come easy. Amen. <laughs> dollars don't come easy, but we have no problem, you know, you know another million dollars in Houston, in Florida, helping underserved communities deal with the economic impact of disasters. And for that, my friend, I thank you. Thank you so much. So, one more. So, Gail McGovern, their CEO, friend of mine, wonderful human being, thank you and your team Absolutely. for being here. You, you've been here all week. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for your private comments. We've had sidebar about how that personal this is uh, to you as a person Absolutely. of color. Understand this. Uh, the number one reason why people don't recover from disasters is poverty. I want to repeat that. The number one reason why people of all races and colors do not recover from natural disasters is poverty. Because you were in a crisis when the crisis struck. You were living from hand to mouth and barely making it. When Katrina struck. When Houston got flooded, you were just barely making it to the utility bill company before the cutoff notice for the utility. You were barely making it, and then here comes the floods. And now you have a car loan and no car anymore. Am I talking to myself? No. Now you've got a home loan and no home anymore. The home has a tree in the roof, and it's, and it's been red tagged, but you still have a mortgage payment and the bank still wants their money. By the way, don't get upset with the bank. If you're the bank and you lend some money, you want your money back. But here's the offset. We don't realize our rights. If you're in a disaster zone and your flood, home gets flooded, overwhelmed, and you've got a FHA or some kind of federally backed mortgage, the law states all those payments are suspended. You don't need to pick it. There's, there's, there's times to pick it, there's times to march, as Reverend Sharpton reminded us all last night. Picketing's not about solving a problem, it's raising attention to a problem. He even educated me last night. But that's his job. His job is to raise attention to a problem. My job is to solve the problem. So there's no time, you don't, you don't need to be picketing, screaming, hollering, no, 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 no. You need to have some financial intelligence, some financial literacy, get the memo, know your rights, so you can calmly tell the Red Cross, Hope Coalition, America, FEMA, to contact the servicer for your mortgage to let them know there's a president, presidentially declared disaster so you can get some breathing room of six months to reset your life. 
So, but if you got a car loan and no car anymore, and a home loan, no home anymore, and a bill and no job anymore, the problem didn't end when the waters receded. The problems just began. But who's there for you? Who's, 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 who's your advocate? There was no advocate until now with Hope Coalition America because FEMA will go in in the first two hours, Red Cross will be there in the first two days, then Opera Show will be there in the first two months, and we're not leaving until two years later when your life has been stabilized with human dignity. Give them a round of applause.